This lecture is on joint and combined variation. Um, joint variation, when they talk about that, it's usually some variable y, let's say, um, varies directly as the product of two or more variables. Um, the only difference between joint and combined is that combined can be any combination of variation. Joint is strictly going to be the product of a bunch of variables, so it will have exactly this form, y equals kxz. There could be other variables as well. Um, in combined variation, you could have direct variation. You could have inverse variation. Um, it could be that you have the square root of some variables or the square of other variables or the cube. Um, <clears throat> and so we're putting both of those together. And so um, in the first couple of problems, it's not really word problems. They're just given to us directly. So r varies jointly as the square of s and the square of t. So jointly means that it's going to be the product of the two variables s and t, and it's going to be the square of s. So we're going to have r equals k and then s squared, because it's the square of x, s and then um, the square of t, so t squared. And then they give us information to find um, k. So r is 12, so we have 12 equals k, and then s is 1, so that would be 1 squared, and then times 2 squared. And so we have 12 is equal to, and we have 1 squared is just 1, and 2 squared is 4, so that's 4k. And then divide by 4 gives us what k is. So k is equal to 3. So r equals 3s squared t squared. And then now we want to find r when s is 3 and t is 4. So we have 3, and then s is 3, so that's 3 squared. And then t is 4, so that's 4 squared. So um, 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. And 4 squared is 16, so we have 27 times 16. And that gives us 432. Okay, And k is equal to 3. Our next one, x is directly proportional to y and inversely proportional to the cube of z. So x is equal to k. So it's always going to be this variable equals some constant k. And then we have um, it's directly proportional to y. So that's going to be k times y. Whoops, sorry, not k. And then inversely means you divide by the next thing, and that's the cube of z, so z cubed. Now we're going to use the next information to figure out what k is. x is 3. So 3 equals k, and then y is also 3. And z is 2. So that would be 2 cubed in the denominator. So we have 3 is equal to 3k divided by 8. And so we'll multiply by 8 to cancel the 8 out, giving us 24 equals 3k and then divide by 3. So we get k is equal to 8. That gives us the equation x is equal to 8y divided by z cubed. Use the next bit of information, and they want us to find x. So x is equal to 8. They tell us y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 5 and that's cubed in the denominator. So the numerator we have 16 and it's divided by 5 cubed, which is 125. And so you can just leave it as this fraction, 16 over 125, or you can write that as a decimal. And the decimal of that is 0 0.128. 
So either one of these for me would be acceptable. Um, just be careful on my math lab. If it asks for an in integer or a reduced fraction, you'll need to give this 16 25ths. It will not accept the 0 0.128. If it asks for a decimal, then you will need to put in the 0 0.128 and not the fraction. So just be careful of how my math lab is asking for the answer. In our next example, the volume V um, of a given mass varies directly, so that's equals K, and then as the temperature T, so times T because it varies directly as, and inversely as the pressure P. So inversely means you divide by that next variable listed. So we get this equation, V equals KT divided by P. The next bit of information we'll use to calculate K. So we get a volume of 300 times K, and then T is 250, and then divided by the pressure, which is 10. And 250 divided by 10 is 25, so we have 25K, and divide both sides by 25. So we get K is equal to 12. That gives us the equation V is equal to 12T divided by P. And then use the next bit of information. So it's what is the volume. So we're going to try to figure out the volume. And they give us a temperature of 370 and a pressure of 20. And so 12 times 370 and divide that by 20. And so we get 222. And this is volume. And so go up to where they gave you a volume to find the um, volume unit. So that's inches cubed. And then write a sentence. And I always just restate the question. So the volume is 222 inches cubed on the device. when the temperature is 370 degrees and the pressure is 20 pounds per square inch. Okay, so here's our next example. So we have the volume of a cone varies jointly as the height and the square of its radius. So V is equal to KHR squared. The next bit of information gives us the information we need to determine what K is. So the radius is 6, the height is 10, and the volume is 120 pi. So we have 120 pi equals K times its height, which is 10, and its radius, which is 6, and we need to square that radius. So we have 120 pi equals K times um, 6 squared is 36 times 10 gives us 360. And so we need to divide both sides by 360. And so we get K is equal to pi over 3. When you simplify this, 120 goes into itself once and into 360 three times. So we get pi over 3 for k. So we have the equation volume is equal to pi over 3 hr squared. And the next bit will be to find the volume. So the volume is going to be pi over 3, and it has a radius of 15 and a height of 7. So 7 times 15 squared. And so for that we have, I'm going to do the 15 squared first. And then times 7. And when I divide that by 3, I get 525. So 525 and the pi will remain. And you just want to leave that pi in your answer.
um, you do not want to give a decimal for this. Okay, and we want to write a sentence. So the volume of a cone having a radius of 15 inches and a height of 7 inches is 525 pi. And this would be inches cubed for volume. And our last one for this um, lecture, the maximum load that a, a cylindrical column with a circular cross section can hold varies directly. So this is um, maximum load, so maybe we'll call that L. Um, varies directly, so that's equals K, and then times the fourth power of the diameter, so D to the fourth. And inversely is the square of the height, so divided by h squared. Now we have a 9 meter column. And so it has a height of 9 meters. And it has a diameter of 2 meters. Will support 64 cubic tons. So the load that it will carry is 64 or metric tons. So 64 equals K times its um, diameter. It had a 2 meter diameter. So that's 2 to the 4th. And it has a height of 9 meters. So that's 9 squared. So we have 64 is equal to 2 to the 4th is 16. So 16K over 81. So we want to multiply both sides by 81. And 81 times 64 gives us 5,184. And that's equal to 16K. And then divide both sides by 16. Oops. And so we get K is equal to 324. So we have L is equal to 324 d to the fourth divided by h squared. So how many metric tons can be supported by a column 9 meters high and 3 meters in diameter? So we want to find L. So 324 and we had a diameter of 3 meters. So that's 3 to the fourth divided by its height, which is 9. So that's going to be 9 squared. So we have 324 times 3 to the 4th is 81, and then divided by 9 squared, which is 81. So the 81's cancel, and we get 324. And the load measurement is in metric tons. So write a sentence. Um, so we could write a column that is 9 meters high and 3 meters in diameter. can hold 324 metric tons. Oops. And so that's it for this lecture. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. Thanks.